Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And today I wanna to share with you how I have automated the delivery process to share the workshop lab credentials. And you can use these techniques for other scenarios, such as handing over tickets to events or even vouchers for certification. There is so many places that you can leverage this information. And I use a combination of Microsoft Forms, SharePoint Lists, Power Automate Flow, and Microsoft Outlook. So stick around, this is very important. I am pretty sure you can leverage this in so many other scenarios. But first, here's my intro video. So here's why I found it important to automate this delivery process to hand over the credentials of all the workshops lab that I was doing. Because in the earlier days, I literally handed over a sheet of paper with their lab credentials that included the username and password. And what happened was people had to manually go ahead and enter that in. And there were all kinds of typos. People would get frustrated. Sometimes, it's usually in the break time or lunch, people would lose their credentials. So I had to go give them another one. It just got a little intense over there. And all happened because it was a manual piece of paper and they had to manually type it in. So what I did is I automated the entire process and this is how I did it step by step. The first thing is a week before the workshop, I would go ahead and send an email with a test account. And what I did was I used this for a different tenant all together, a different tenant. I would go ahead and get some test accounts from there and I would go ahead and send that to all my lab attendees, all the students who are going to do it. And the big reason for that was for students to verify access to the lab. That was the important thing because sometimes people would be have accessing to the lab, they couldn't even access the lab tenant because they, are, they were using a company laptop and they had some restrictions only to their tenants. So I wanted these students to figure out all the potential gotchas they may run into and that was the only reason I used to send them at least a week before the workshop. Also using the Entra AD, I could monitor to see how much activity is going on which student actually went ahead and you know, tried to do the testing. So I was able to keep an eye on that just in case I needed to send out that email again. But this was important, do this. I did it a week before, you can at least do it a few days before, but this is critical for the students to see, hey, does their laptop, which potentially could be a work laptop, can it access the lab tenant or do they need to make provisions for some other device? All right, the next thing was usually a day before the workshop, usually in the evening's time, I would go ahead and then send out an email again to all the students and it's basically filling out a Microsoft form. And I'll show you what that form is. Once the students fill out this Microsoft form uh, using a Power Automate flow, it will go ahead and get the lab credentials which are stored on my SharePoint list and then using again another Power Automate flow, it would send that information over via Outlook as an email to the students. And again, I did this very close to the workshop because I didn't want the students to go and start playing with it and have all the information. I just did it usually the evening before the event. So now that you have an overview of the entire process, let's deep dive into what each of these services do. The first thing is Microsoft Forms. And the Microsoft Forms is a very simple thing. Go ahead and add an intro page um, and specify that, hey, this is for you to go ahead and fill out some information, basically your email address, and I will not use this email for any spam type of person. And the form basically has only two questions. Give me your full name and give me your email. Email is what's used as that unique ID information. So let me show you what the form looks like. So here is a Microsoft form that I used for a workshop at the 2023 Microsoft Power Platform Conference. And here's just a preview. Like I said, just an introduction and make sure you put in some verbiage saying that this, your email address will not be used for spam. Uh, after that, two simple questions full name and an email address. Remember, email address is what is used to make it unique. You identify who that person is based on that email address. Next, it was my SharePoint list. Now the SharePoint list is where I went ahead and saved all the lab information and then Power Automate would reference it. So this was the list with all the credentials and then it also had some control columns which I'll walk you through it. Control columns basically was the licenses which were assigned was all of these accounts that were there, were they verified, making sure they had the correct licenses. If a license request came in, was that license already verified? And was there an email sent? So these were basically the four control columns that I have. So let me show you what that SharePoint list looks like. 
So as a Microsoft MVP, I had access to the Microsoft Customer Digital Experience or CDX. This is where I would go ahead and create my lab tenants um, and I would go ahead and get all the credentials directly from here. Once I got that information, I put it into a SharePoint list, which means columns such as the tenant, lab username, password, licenses assigned, remember those four control columns, the licenses assigned, verified, assigned, email. Um, these entire things were already pre-populated, which means I had to have the username and password because this is what was being referenced to send the information. Now, initially, one of the things I did is for each and every lab account, I would do a verification. Can I go ahead and sign in as that user um, with its username and password just to make sure the credentials are good? If I did that, I would go ahead and check my verified column. Next, I would also do a verification. Has all the correct licenses been assigned for this lab? If I did that, that was also a check way because most of the power platform ones needed those additional per user, which is now called as premium level licenses. Uh, I just had to make sure that once the student has come in, their lab is good to go. And so I did this, I did a verification also to make sure the licenses were assigned. Uh, these are the two things. Next is I also had the verification column called assigned and email. Once the student filled out the form, the form would trigger the workflow to go ahead and get the next available credential. Um, and then once it grabs it, it goes and puts the username and goes and gets the email. Again, those two things came from the Microsoft form. And then once this item was assigned, that check mark came. And then when email was sent, that check mark came. All of these things were done by the Power Automate flow. Now, that was the important reason why I had this SharePoint list, especially with these four control columns. Okay. Next was the automation present running in the background. And that was done using the powerful Power Automate. And here is basically my workflow. First thing is the Microsoft form. When somebody goes ahead and fills it out, that is my trigger. And what that does is it goes ahead and first checks to see, hey, does this email address already exist in that SharePoint list? That's the first verification it does. Because remember, the email address is the unique one. And let's face it, sometimes students could go ahead and fill out the form multiple times. Mistakes can happen. So any time a form entry came in, I always verified, does that email address already exist? If it does, go ahead and grab that existing list item from that SharePoint, get that information and send that email and go ahead and end the flow. That was the first process it followed through. Now, if that new entry came in um, and that email address didn't exist, that's fine. Go ahead and get the next available list item from SharePoint list, um, send that email, update the SharePoint list saying that, okay, this is the new email address that came in, then go ahead and end the flow. So this is the logic of how that Power Automate flow runs in the backend. Now, let me at least show you how that cloud flow looks. So as you're aware of the cloud flows, there always needs to be a trigger. And this is it, when a new response is submitted. And as you can see, it is that form ID, the form that I just showed you with those two simple questions. Uh, once that form ID goes ahead and triggers it, I go ahead and get the form response. And then the first thing I do is I do a get items call. What I do is that that column that I had, this student email, which is this one right here, this student email, does that already exist in my SharePoint list? And that is done using this O data call. And all I care about is just one. Therefore, I left my top count as one. So this is a very important and critical step to make sure that there is no duplicates um, and also avoids any mistakes that the students may do on their side by filling out the form twice. The next thing is going and setting up this variable of type integer and I do a length function PowerFX call. That only basically tells me that, hey, did any entries come from the SharePoint get items action? That's all I do. Based on this variable, I have a condition. What is the value of this variable? This variable whose length is there, um, if it is zero, if it is zero, well then in that case, this truly is a new entry that came in Microsoft Forms. In that case, go ahead and do a get items. The get items basically is get the next assignment, which is false. That false would be the next available credential that I have over here. See the assignment equals false, which means there isn't any student credential already given. That's the next one that I do. So that's why I only do a top count of one. Once I get that item, perfect. I go ahead and make a compose statement to go ahead and get the lab name and the password. I also go ahead and assign the ID for that. Uh, go ahead and send an email. Now the email will be very detailed. Basically in this case, giving an overview of what the lab is going to be, 
credentials, link to the lab, and then also go ahead and provide a link to where they can download the slide deck, the step-by-step -step lab, and also go ahead and give my contact information. See, that email needs to be a nice, clean email, specifically in the body, and provide some good verbiage over here. And once that is completed, I do another apply to each just to make sure that I go ahead and update the item. And then that columns, the verification columns, these two over here, see the assigned and the email, I go ahead and I make sure that those are assigned to yes so that they are not used again. These credentials are not used. That's the important one. Now, in the false side is say, for example, if the var count equals to one, which means I actually do have a email address matching the user did. So it's like a duplicate that is coming in. If that is the case, completely fine. Go ahead and get whatever the value is, uh, the email address and password, get the original one, all right? Don't get a new one and send it directly back to the e users um, with the same body and everything. Uh, just in this case, I don't have to do another update uh, because I've already done that on the left side when the first time entry came in. But this is the overall logic that I use in my Power Automate flow. And finally, the use of my Microsoft 365 Outlook. Now, I just showed you how those actions are used in Power Automate, but there's one more additional thing, is that consider using a service account when you're going and sending these emails. Now, if you deliberately want to use your personal email address so you can have a good conversation going on with them via email, it's completely fine. Go ahead and use that as well. Uh, but if you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and create another service account or at least another mailbox. And you can do something like calling it as a contact at whatever is your company email address. You can do that. Um, in addition, provide details. And I showed you that in my Power Automate flow is that that Outlook step that I have, that action, it has good verbiage in the body. So do that. Give an overview of the event give links to download the information, also link to where you're gonna access the lab, and then always end with your contact information. That way you can always have a good ongoing discussion with that. These are the important steps I follow when it comes to Microsoft Outlook, uh, especially for the mailbox that I use and the information that I provide in the body of the email. So to all the people who asked me how I go ahead and do this automation process, thank you for being patient. Hopefully this video gives you a good step-by-step -step so you can replicate that for yourself and not just for handing over credentials for any lab that you're doing, but for other scenarios as well. Two of them that I showed you was handing over vouchers for some certifications that you might do internally or even handing over tickets, uh, free tickets for any events that you may have. There is so many areas that you can use this logic. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.